All right, um, this is going to be a general overview, I suppose, of um, Max and uh, some, um, yeah, in terms of how to how to sort of patch various objects together and so on, um, along with uh, a little introduction to some shortcuts, which I didn't get around to showing in class, but which you might find quite useful. Um, so I know obviously that this is intended to be a sort of a, a longer term reference if you you know if you want to come back and figure out again some of these shortcuts. So <clears throat> remember when you open Max, which you do by clicking on the uh, Max MSP icon. Um, in most cases, uh, you will uh, the first thing that will pop up is the Max window. Sometimes that won't happen uh, if you've if you've closed the program with without having the max window open then it won't open on restart from what I remember um, so uh, and, and the max window is something you will always need to have uh, in front so that you can see diagnostic messages um, that will pop up so if it hasn't popped up you need to uh, go to window and click on max window you can also see that it's got a shortcut of command M um, I imagine it's probably control M on the PC you'll have to investigate that if you're a PC user. Um, so click on that and the Max window pops up. Um, as I say, the Max window is a, a diagnostics window. You'll find with most uh, programming applications there is some means of the program telling you if once you've made a, um, once you've compiled a program, or in Max's case once you've locked a patch and you're trying to get it to work, <coughs> um, it will tell you if there are any error messages or anything that isn't working as it should do. Um, so that's what the max window is for. You can also send messages to it um, via things like the uh, print um, object, um, and again, that's that's to sort of you you can insert the print object anywhere in your patch, um, and uh, it will or pretty much anywhere in your patch, assuming you're using max objects rather than MSP, for example, and it will give you uh, a it will basically print out whatever's being sent between objects. Um, so you can tell whether things are as you expected them to be or not. So anyway, that's the max window. Um, and then it, to make a patcher window, you go to the file menu and click on new patcher. And it pops up eventually. There you go. Um, <clears throat> and uh, you can, well, as, as we'll discuss later on, you can make a, you can make a number of different patcher windows. Um, and you can nest patches within patches. Um, so you can make a kind of hierarchy of, um, of I suppose, subroutines, um, which uh, will make your program or your your patch more efficient in terms of how it looks and also how it functions. But we'll come back to that later. In the meantime, uh, just to, to go over the window a little bit, um, in the bottom, um, in the, on the bottom uh, sort of area at the bottom here you have a series of icons um, the main ones of concern to you at the moment will be uh, this one on the bottom left hand side which is a lock button um, Max uh, has two states that the patch might be in uh, one is unlocked and one is locked when the patch is unlocked it means you can edit it you can um, add and remove objects and uh, you can patch things together and so on. So that's you know how you how you edit your patch and build your patch. Once the patch is locked, um, incidentally, when it's unlocked, you'll see that it's actually labelled as such in the menu. Uh, sorry, in the um, title bar. Uh, when you lock it, that un uh, that unlock bit disappears, and uh, <coughs> in locked mode, your patch is in sort of performance mode. So that's how you'd use it if you're actually looking to make music with your patch having built it. Now obviously we'll start with it unlocked because we haven't built anything yet. So double click to make a new object. Well when you double click you get a palette that pops up and the palette has all the various different objects which you uh, might come across while you're uh, building your patches. Um, most of them in fact in here are graphical user interface objects. So they are objects which have a graphical component and enable you to um, interact with them in some way, either by means of pressing them so that they become kind of buttons, 
or by uh, click and dragging them, in which case they essentially act as sliders. Um, and uh, what else can you do? Well, they're, they're you know uh, more and less sophi well sophisticated or complicated or um, uh, yeah, pretty <laughs> um, objects. Um, which you know all have their certain functions, and we will look at a number of them as we go on. Uh, the, <coughs> the 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 kind of nuts and bolts object, which you'll use actually most of the time, is the most boring looking of all of them, but it's the most powerful, and it's this one on the left hand side. And when you click on that one, um, you will get this um, basically a, a box, which you can write into, <coughs> and you will write the name of your um, your object that you want to call into that box. If you've looked at the Max um, introductory video, um, you'll have heard that basically all of your objects that you're using in Max are essentially little programs on your hard drive. And by writing in the names of those programs, you call them into Max. And by patching them together, obviously, you make all those programs interact with each other. Um, and that's what builds your tool. Um, you will develop a kind of vocabulary of these objects, and uh, that will be, uh, you know, there'll be a certain basic vocabulary that you build up. And as you build up that vocabulary, that means that you, you, you develop a, a greater fluency with the program, if you like. Um, but you don't need to know every single object. You can, uh, there's a, an extensive reference manual which we'll look at later on. Um, and sometimes a little bit of guesswork uh, can, uh, you know, bear it. If, if, you, if you know a, a, a t certain task that you want a particular object to perform, very often you'll find an object that does that task. Um, and it will usually be fairly intuitively named, so you can sometimes guess what the, the object might be. Um, but anyway, we'll come back to the vocabulary soon. But as I say, there are certain objects which are going to come up very, very frequently. Um, I will uh, write in one, so this is print. Um, and as you notice, when I was actually, I'll do that again. When you when you start putting in the first letter of of the object, you will get a list of possible um, possible objects that come up under that um, under that letter. And as you write it in more of the word, then it sort of narrows it down. Um, once you've once you've got once you've written in the object name. Um, you can click outside the box and it kind of initializes the object and you will see a uh, the object is you know shrinks to the side of the word in most cases um, and will um, will sort of spawn will you know will, will basically have um, a series of inlets and outlets um, which you can connect things to and from and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, incidentally, though, if you hover, I mean, all of these inlets and outlets all do different things. Um, and you can hover your cursor over the uh, the inlet or the outlet, and it will tell you basically what it does. Um, but yeah, we'll come back to that in a minute. So there's print. That's a print object. And uh, I could do another object, which is, um, let's do... Um, let me try. Okay, and this one, as you see, has a different number of inlets and outlets on it. And then I can put in a counter, and this one again has a different number of inlets and outlets on it. Um, so there you go. That's your. There's there's three objects there, all uh, which perform different functions, and you connect them together, and so on.